Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Roger Distrudi. And as you know, every month we strive to bring a different department to you and talk about roles and responsibilities. And this month we're very pleased to have Aaron Brault with, our, our, Aaron Brault with us, our Planning and Conservation Director. And I think it's been nearly six years now, right? Is, is that correct, Six Aaron? years. I've been with the county about three years, close to three years, as Planning and Conservation Director or Interim Planning and Conservation Director. Just so. the other day, Aaron popped in the office and we were talking about some project he's been working on. There has been so many good things happening in Sheboygan County and, in, and certainly in large part because of Aaron's leadership or the work of his staff or the cooperation with the city. So this program, we're gonna to get to know a little bit more about Aaron Brault, our Planning and Conservation Department and a lot of wonderful projects, good work that's in play. Aaron, please start by sharing just a little bit about yourself. Six years with the county, three years as director. Uh, tell us a little bit about your professional background. Um, sure, uh, in, in the planning arena, I worked for a private uh, planning firm out of Madison, uh, coming out of college for four years. Um, knew Sheboygan area well. Uh, the, the firm I worked for helped uh, design the layout of Blue Harbor. Uh, we did Plymouth's comprehensive plan at the time, uh, the city of Sheboygan's comprehensive plan at the time. So I knew the area quite well before we moved here. I grew up in the area. I'm from Two Rivers originally. Um, and then uh, went to Indianapolis for three years uh, while my wife finished her medical training there and then moved back up here to Sheboygan, knew we wanted to come back to Wisconsin and Sheboygan was on our list and we actually moved here for her, her position and um, I guess we've been here. Your wife's six. a doctor here in town, right? Yep, she's a pediatrician. Yeah, so. very nice, very nice. Well, we're certainly pleased you moved back to the area and again, a lot of good things going on Set the stage a little bit. What are the roles and responsibility of the Planning and Conservation Department? Um, we have uh, a varied role, I think, um, throughout the community. We have a number of uh, ordin ordinances we administer in our, in our office, um, including things like the shoreland ordinance that the county has, our sanitary ordinance. So if you have a septic system or a holding tank or a thing of that nature in your, uh, on your property that uh, is administered through our department, uh, we also have a number of programs, household hazardous waste, waste pharmaceutical disposal. Um, we are the recipient of a grant back in 2005, 2006. The non-motorized transportation pilot program is administered through our office. Uh, all the county's mapping, uh, parcel mapping, any kind of GIS data, later, data layers are, are um, in our department as well. So. Uh, we do, I guess we dabble in a number of different things. We have our conservation division, which uh, helps farmers out, manure storage, um, buffer strips uh, go through that division as well. So uh, very interesting. Every day is different. And when I you talk say. about ordinances that deal with setbacks or septic, um, Clarify a little bit for our viewers that's predominantly more unincorporated or rural areas. Yeah, right? our jurisdiction is primarily outside of the municipalities. Right. Um, as far as shoreland, each municipality has their own uh, rules and regulations. They primarily follow what the county does. Um, however, uh, our jurisdiction is just outside those, um, outside of the incorporated areas. And about what's your total budget and about how many staff? Uh, there's 15 uh, full-time uh, staff on our, uh, our table of organization. We also have two people in our office that are um, housed in the county, but they're not really county employees. They're there for project-specific grants uh, that we're, we're part of. Um, and then our budget uh, for 2013, I believe, was about $2.1 million in operating. Very good. So you mentioned, you know, predominantly rural areas, unincorporated areas, uh, that's the, those are your primary customers, but you've obviously uh, been providing other programs and services that benefit everyone in this community more directly, such as the, the pharmaceutical program. What is that? How does... How does that work? Um, that program and, and the household hazardous waste definitely benefit everybody, and or you know we deal with everybody in the the county with those programs. Waste pharmaceuticals, we have disposal boxes at four police stations throughout the county: Sheboygan, Plymouth, Kohler, and Sheboygan Falls, where folks can get rid of their uh, waste pharmaceuticals so they don't end up flushing them down the 
the uh, toilet. There's a lot of studies going on out there that that's starting to affect our fish and, and wildlife population at, as those uh, chemicals get into our water stream. They're not treated at the water treatment plants or in a septic system. Um, it, those chemicals aren't treated, so they're going up the food chain just like other pollutants. Um, and also important for uh, that they don't get in the hands of the wrong, wrong people right. or kids or visitors that might right. be visiting your house. You don't want them accidentally thinking it's candy or something right. like that. So, so safe place to drop off, dispose yep. of those. And then you have your hazardous waste disposal site, what, every couple of a couple times a year yep. where folks can come and bring materials? Yeah, about four or five times a year we have that. Um, usually every other month in the summertime. The schedule is on our website. Okay. Uh, and that uh, we, we, um, we alternate between the eastern side of the county and the western side of the county. And so folks can bring their, their hazardous waste um, and dispose of it properly. Uh, we contract with Veolia Environmental Services, and uh, we've had a great partnership with them for the last couple of years. It's amazing the stuff we get. We still get DDT every year. Um, I believe that chemical is banned in 1961 or 1962, so uh, there's a lot of stuff out there yet. So, How about some more significant projects that you've been working on throughout the county? Um, lately, this past year, it's been primarily a lot of dredging work. Uh, the Sheboygan River, as you know, um, there was a lot of activity going on on the Sheboygan River this summer. So uh, with the great partnership, as you mentioned before, that we had with the city and a number of other uh, entities, EPA, DNR, uh, UW Extension, um, it took Army up a lot Corps of, of engineers. Army Corps of Engineers, you name it. <laughs> the list goes on and on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a great learning experience. but. Um, yeah, there was some great work done on the Sheboygan River this year. Uh, we were fortunately picked uh, to receive um, some funding to finally clean up our river. It's been on the radar for about 30 years and being talked about. And I, I think those early steps that uh, folks in the community made uh, prior to the, or leading up to the, uh, being able to get the funding was probably one of the main reasons why we got that funding. Uh, there's 40, 42 other communities on the Great Lakes that are listed as areas of concern, and um, Sheboygan was very fortunate in uh, being able to finally make something happen. And, and I want to come back to this River Harbor cleanup a little bit more later in the program because sure. it's just been such an incredible opportunity for this community and a lot of hard work and a lot of money. A lot yeah. of money's gone into it. Um, more recently, the board. Uh, passed an intergovernmental agreement between the city and county with a new bike trail that's proposed in the city of Sheboygan and this is going to be a, another asset for our community. Please talk about that a little bit. Sure, uh, that, that's been a, a project in the making since about 2008. Um, that's when the, uh, the first round of funding was allocated for that project was 2008. Uh, we wrote and received another grant to leverage some of those dollars even a little bit further. And it's an abandoned rail line that currently runs through the heart of the city of Sheboygan. Um, very dilapidated, you know, there's trash strewn everywhere throughout the corridor. Um, it's overgrown. Um, so I think it's going to be a, a really nice amenity for, for the entire community. Um, it'll spruce up an area that's been sort of forgotten about. Um, the rail line stopped using it, I believe, 30, 40 years ago, if not more. So uh, it's just been sitting there out of sight, out of mind for quite some time. So, And if you look at that corridor, there's a ton of destinations. 31% of the county's population lives within a mile of that corridor. 10 of the 16 public schools are within a mile of that corridor. So. Um, you know, I see it as a great project. It was a great partnership between the, the city and county on that. Um, as you mentioned, we signed an intergovernmental agreement. Uh, the city um, will soon, uh, uh, at, at their next council meeting, adopt that. Um, and that just uh, lays out uh, long-term maintenance of that. Who's going to take care of the day-to-day -day mowing, keeping the lights on, that kind of thing. So it's kind of so. a unique project in that with the non-motorized program, sometimes a community will apply for funding and they'll put in a new sidewalk or a new pedestrian or bike trail and they'll take responsibility for it. But in this instance, the county really took the lead, yep. obviously with the support of the city of Sheboygan, but we're gonna own this 1.7 mile segment. The city's gonna help maintain it, cut the grass yep. and, and do that ongoing maintenance. But what 
you know, again, what a wonderful opportunity to improve property values and give folks another opportunity to get to and from work or play and do it in a safe environment. Yeah, it's, it's uh, again, I mean, you, you mentioned improving property values. Uh, the, the nationwide statistic from the, the Board of Realtors is that uh, uh, home sales that are adjacent to or are very close to trails, urban trails like this will be um, typically jump 9% uh, versus other similar like homes that may not be close to a trail. And they tend to sell about 20% quicker. So, um, you know, can't guarantee that's going to be the same in the city of Sheboygan, but nationwide, right. those are the statistics. But, when it, but the alternative is right now, folks got an old dilapidated rail that's overgrown, strewn with garbage, and garbage that probably doesn't yeah. attract anything that folks want in their backyard. No, nope, so, absolutely a not. Wonderful so. turnaround. Nice yep. work on that. Well, with that, I'll turn it over to Roger Destrudy. Thank you. Uh, good to have you with us, Aaron. Uh, Appreciate it. As you know, uh, the county and all municipalities are under more pressure to reduce the property taxes, and we're asking your department to do that over the years, too. How, how are you handling these challenges? Yeah, I, I, over the past few years, and, and I, I think we've seen this in, in a number of county departments, um, we, two years ago, merged with the, the conservation, or the, at that time, the Land and Water Department, and now we're the Planning and Conservation Department. So we merged, and we've gained some synergies there. Um, not only from uh, staffing types of issues, but also small things. Um, when we merged, there was four or five different printers we were using. Um, we've consolidated that down to two. You know, we have the, one of these all-in-one units. It makes sense now. Instead of paying 20 cents uh, per color copy, we're now paying six cents. So, um, you know, we're looking at both big and small types of items. And in our department over the last few years, and, and we hope to continue this, we've been um, able to diversify our funding away from uh, the county's property tax levies through grants, uh, both public and private. Um, so we've been quite fortunate, again, over the last few years in doing that. And I know you've been very successful about uh, being able to acquire some grants and has been able to do some very good things. How have you been able to do that and what's the procedure on making that happen? Well, first, it's, it's coming to the, the board to uh, get permission to apply for these types of things. Um, over the last few years, as I mentioned, uh, we've, we've gotten some public and private grants. Uh, one of them is a, a watershed study that we're working on uh, in the Otter Creek watershed comparing to the Fishers Creek watershed up in Howard's Grove, Otter Creek being out by Plymouth, and, and Fishers is our control, and then Otters is our test watershed, but we were able to um, work with the Nature Conservancy and get a $1.5 million um, grant through the Kohler Trust for Preservation to do this study. So that's helping in some of our staffing costs and helping offset some of the, uh, the uh, costs we've or the reductions we've received in our tax levy over the years. And I understand there's been a recent uh, number of ordinance changes association associated with your department. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could explain some of the significant changes and how that it would, would affect some of the citizens in our county. Sure, the, the, the biggest one, the, the, the two ordinances we changed this year or, or went through uh, um, uh, revisions on were the the shoreland the county shoreland ordinance which is chapter 70 of the county shoreland or the the county code of ordinances and then chapter 72 which is the sanitary ordinance uh, and um, the, sh the shoreland ordinances uh, the sanitary ordinance was primarily uh, small changes there was different language uh, adopted at the state level that we had to incorporate into our ordinance but the shoreland ordinance was a, a year in the making we had a great group of stakeholders that got together um, uh, that was another uh, state revision that uh, the state had worked on for eight years in a bipartisan manner and the uh, uh, counties adopt those rules. And uh, when we got those new rules from the state, uh, we um, got a stakeholders group together among, uh, we invited Lake Association members to the table, uh, board of realtors, home builders, uh, primarily anybody who might be affected by uh, the shoreland ordinance. And so we worked with them for over, well, about a year, um, coming up with the, the new language that we are able to change um, per the state uh, 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 code. And 
the, the, the primary changes in, or I guess the, the changes that will affect our, our citizens the most are um, really uh, uh, non-conforming, existing non-conforming structures uh, that people might own around our inland lakes. Um, those rules are uh, more flexible than what the old ordinance was. And then setback, um, the language on setbacks is a little more flexible than what the prior ordinance was. So overall on the Shoreland Ordinance, uh, again, a great uh, stakeholders group, uh, put in a lot of time. And um, typically, you know, that, that ordinance can be a little contentious at times. And when it came to the public hearing, uh, we had nobody show up. And I think that was due to uh, uh, the, uh, the staff in the planning department, uh, again, reaching out to all these different groups, and, and there was no surprises to anybody. Mm -hmm. So um, those were, that was the big one. Okay. Long answer to a short question, <laughs> I guess. So. And we touched on it a little bit earlier, but uh, another thing we've been involved with is the hazardous waste collection in the county, and uh, there are some possible changes in this upcoming year. Would you explain sort of where the locations are, and I know you said the the website has some of that available. Would you expand on that a bit? Sure. Um, again, we have two locations, one in the eastern uh, part of the community or county, and that is the uh, Sheboygan Southside Highway Shed, uh, which is just uh, off of I-43 south of County Highway V along the frontage road. And then in the western part of the county, we use the uh, Plymouth uh, highway Shed, which is just uh, north of uh, State 23 off of County Highway O or OJ, I believe, is what that uh, county road is. And uh, the big change, and I think it's a, a, an exciting change for our citizens, is that um, this year we'll be accepting electronics. In, in the past, uh, electronics were a charge of, you know, I think, to get rid of a TV, it was 40, 45 bucks. Uh, this year in, included in the, the $10 fee to get in, which is what we've had now for the, the past year or two, I can't remember, past year um, to help, again, go, going back to offsetting our costs. Mm -hmm. um, we implemented that fee last year. So included in, in the, the $10 fee to get in, not only can you um, get rid of your hazardous waste, you can bring in electronics for free. Well, I guess it's not free. You're paying the ten dollars fee, fee, but, but it beats forty-five dollars. And um, you know, we've been encouraging neighbors to get together if they want to split the cost of the the ten bucks to pack up one car and and bring as much as they can. And that ten dollars is for whatever you can bring in. I know you mentioned about the fee at, at um, the the budget cycle um, well, two years ago. Then we had talked about that at finance and. Uh, about trying to pick up some fees to cover the cost. Some of the concern was if the, uh, you, possibly people wouldn't bring in their material because there was a cost involved. Have you seen any of that? Or the good citizens want to come in and do the right thing? Yeah, we, we, our, our numbers did fall last year uh, compared to prior years. However, the volume didn't go down a whole lot. So I think some of those, uh, you know, the neighbors getting together type of thing started okay. to happen. And that's what, um, you know, when we implemented that fee, we talked to other counties that had mm -hmm. a fee, and, and that's what they saw, especially the first year. Uh, you know, they saw things start to go down, but then they started to pick back up once people got used to, to having the fee. And I think with the electronics, um, I don't, I, I, I'm guessing that it's going oh, to sure. go up. I mean, that's a a need in any any community right now. Nobody mm -hmm. knows what to do with the, all their old electronics that are building up in their basement or garage or wherever they might be. And I know you're a part of the Friends of the Marsh group. Um, I've sat in on a few meetings myself and uh, you're working on a new endeavor out at the Marsh. Would you explain on some of those details about that? Yeah, out at the Sheboygan Marsh, um, the, the Friends Group is uh, working with an architect right now to get some conceptual drawings of a, a potential new building out at the marsh right now. Um, the old lodge is getting pretty old. It, 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 it needs um, some costly repairs pretty, pretty regularly. Um, and it's not really set up for meeting space. Uh, Camp Wicota has uh, programs, environmental programs out at the marsh and, and they're in the back of a, a donated trailer. 
Um, so we're looking at uh, combining uh, those two different types of uses, uh, more of a meeting type of hall with uh, Camp Waikota and, and giving them a, 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 a learning space and, um, and potentially a new storage building too. The storage buildings out there right now, you can go push and move them. So they're one good windstorm or one good snowstorm away from falling down. So um, it's definitely time, uh, especially for the storage buildings to um, have something a little more, uh, I guess, recent or, or updated out there. Um, so yeah, the, the, the Friends Group is really focusing now on the, on the building, the learning center and, and meeting space. Um, from the county perspective, there's really nothing out on the western side of the community when we host meetings out there to have a place to meet. Um, so uh, we're looking at that as uh, something coming here in the future. Hopefully Thank near, you. near Thank future. You. Yep. And we still have three guys in a grill out there running yep. our Marsh uh, restaurant and of course that beautiful 80 foot wooden tower. I think it's still the tallest wooden observation as tower far in the as state. I know it's still the tallest. I know there's some other counties now looking to, to put a tower up. In fact, that one county took our plans, I think, or asked for our they plans. They asked for them and, yeah. and the friends group uh, didn't want to give them up without a, a cost. Yeah. And the contingency on the plan was that it, it had to be 79 feet rather than 80. <laughs> That's so right. We That's would right. still maintain I, the, the tallest I remember that. tower yeah. in, the, yeah. in the state. So. Well, if you haven't had a chance to if you're looking to take a little drive or see some beautiful scenery and now with the snow down a little bit, and I, I imagine that tower probably doesn't have any snow on the steps, yeah. uh, you might want to drive on out to the marsh and grab a beer and a, and a hamburger and, and walk the, the steps and, and see a nice sight, although it's certainly a lot more attractive and fun to do, I think, in the summer than yeah. in the dead of winter. But <laughs> now would be a time to do it with the little snowfall we have with that, with that melt. I want to go back to the topic we were talking about earlier, Aaron, and that's the, the Sheboygan River Harbor clean up dredging it. It surprises me a little bit because Aaron and Chad from the city, Chad Pelichek, uh, there's been a fair amount of press or coverage of this over the years and of course it's been going on for years though uh, recently uh, there was an update at a chamber forum and we had maybe 60, 70 people there and I think many of them were surprised to just you know, hear what they did about it. They, they hadn't been following it that closely so let's just take a couple of minutes and set the stage uh, let me start by saying, in 14 years as county administrator, this is probably one of the projects I've gotten the most satisfaction out of from a standpoint of what it means for this community. I mean, it has just been so cool to see the county board and the city common council and all the other state and federal agencies you mentioned earlier pull together and leverage nearly $100 million to once and for all, after 30 years, clean up a Superfund site, one of what, 43 on the, on the Great Lakes. Yep. So we were so fortunate, as Aaron mentioned, to have this opportunity and all of us who had a little role in it, it's just satisfying to see it happen because we know it's gonna be, just be such a huge improvement for our community, economic development, water quality, wildlife habitat, you name it. So to set the stage, just what was cleaned up Aaron, where, where did they start and, and what work has been done? Sure. In, in 2007 and 2006, uh, they started up in the Sheboygan Falls reach of the river. Um, and they completed the, the, the dredging of the Superfund area up in that uh, stretch of the river in 2007. And then these past two years, it was primarily from um, the pollutants being taken out of the river. The dredged area was from Kiwanis Park down to the mouth of the, the river, the harbor. And um, so what they, from about the Kiwanis Park area down to the A Street Bridge, uh, prior to the dredging was about two to three feet deep in most areas, give or take. And uh, now a channel is going to be there without the pollutants that you mentioned of about eight to 10 feet in that stretch. So uh, very significant, uh, uh, you know, increase in depth. Um, Although if the lake level keeps going down, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but, uh, but night anyways, two to three feet, from two eight to three to 10. feet to eight to 10. So, and, and then from a street out to the Harbor, uh, it went, uh, the, 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 the federal navigation channel, um, was dredged down from 11 feet or down to 11 feet to where about where it makes the big curve. Uh, and right at that curve is where it went down to 15 feet. So again, very big change. All, uh, there was areas of the harbor that were 
you know, 10, 11 feet deep already. However, it was hit and miss, right. and some areas were very shallow in that stretch. So overall, great improvement. Um, you mentioned economic development. I know my counterpart, Chad Pelashek at the city that you've mentioned, he's dealing with some developers down in that area now that are uh, quite interested in, in putting up a development. So um, already we're starting to see some increased uh, development activity along that stretch. So, Well, as the three of us know, I mean, imagine trying to um, attract development here. Come on to Sheboygan County, and we've got this beautiful harbor and marina and this beautiful corridor through the parks. Oh, by the way, it's a super fun site, and uh, can't there's, the you can't eat the fish, and there's <laughs> warnings about uh, eating in the fish and swimming in the water. I mean, all that goes away, and, and it's just yeah. such a tremendous accomplishment. It also speaks to just how expensive it can be to clean things up yeah. uh, when we, you know, when we've done things in history that we just didn't know better. It wasn't as though, it wasn't, I don't think people intentionally were trying to pollute this river or harbor, but Ultimately, that happened, and it has been very costly to, to get it cleaned up. But now, uh, now we can market this area as a. Hopefully, it will no. It'll be taken off the list, delisted as a Superfund site. Over time, the fish will be safer to eat. The ducks uh, that some of the hunters may shoot that fly, whether they're in the city or out of the area, they'll be safer to eat. And if you're taking your kids swimming or whatever, you just know you're in a safe place. Yep. And, you know, another thing to mention, it was an interesting project over, overall. I mean, there was a, a thousand tons of debris that came out of the river. So bowling balls was a big one that had Amazing. been thrown in the river over time. Uh, bicycles, uh, you name it. So, um, you know, in addition to the, the, the PCBs being in the PAH is taken out of the river, uh, there were some interesting uh, things that transpired during the project. Thousand tons of debris, and I think at one point, Aaron, you told me that if you took all the sediment that was removed, it would what go up to the forty-fifth row at Lambeau Field, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, about the forty-fifth or fiftieth row of Lambeau Field, and um, you know, on a more local perspective, uh, the new American Orthodontics Building or the former Thomas Building on on uh, Washington Avenue and, and or State Twenty Eight on the south side of the city, it would fill up about forty-two of those buildings. Wow. So wow, there was a incredible. lot of sediment, about a truck every three to five minutes. My compliments to you and your leadership. And you, know, you think about success stories. Aaron mentioned earlier, he's from two rivers just, just north of us here and uh, leaves the area and marries a doctor. He's obviously right. a sharp young man, comes on back <laughs> to the community and starts as our non-motorized transportation pilot uh, manager or leader there and then was promoted to director and now planning and conservation director because we consolidated that area, has done an excellent job, a lot of feathers in his cap, a lot of good work in this community. And I hope you've enjoyed a little overview of our planning and conservation department. If you have any questions or want to learn more about it, don't hesitate to contact Aaron or one of his staff. And next month we'll have Nan Todd here from the Clerk of Courts to talk about those very important responsibilities. So until then, thank you for joining us.